Nepal, the birthplace of Buddhism. A magical and mysterious land in which legends such as the fabled Shangri-La and the elusive Yeti have dominated culture for generations. But a new story has emerged. One that is being seen as a modern miracle, something only possible through the spiritual power of Buddhism. It's a phenomenon that that people draw great pride and inspiration from here. Rambon Jan, a 15-year-old boy, has been meditating in dense jungle without food or water for 10 months. Many suggest he is a physiological and cognitive freak with such immense power of mind over matter that it could change the way we look at modern science and medicine forever. If he's truly gone without food and water, it's difficult to explain on a purely scientific basis, so you'd have to bring in spirituality in here. As millions of pilgrims flock to the site, we'll explore the truth. To see that in the middle of Nepal, in the middle of all the crowds around, that's very, very special and very questioning, of course. Is he the second coming, Buddha reincarnate? Or is this something far more sinister? An elaborate hoax in which a young boy is being starved to death before our very eyes for profit. Many people fast for religious or health reasons for short periods of time, but they never reject all sustenance. The longest a person can go without food has been documented as being around two and a half months before you die of starvation. In an open environment, uh, breathing normally with, with warm air surrounding you without any fluid at all, you would last between four, perhaps five days. Rambon Jan has not eaten, and more importantly, not drunk anything for ten months. By filming him continuously over the next four days, we will investigate this phenomenon and discover whether a human being can live without food and water. It would be impossible to, to meditate for that long without food and water. I have studied similar cases in the past, and this is possible. Through his deep meditation, he's gone into a hibernating state and he is living on spiritual energy. I can't accept that. Um, it goes against what I know about how the body works, about the nutrition that you need. He's getting food and he's getting fluid from somewhere. Ram has never been scientifically tested. He sits undisturbed as millions watch his every move. If he did the same thing in Birmingham or in Baltimore, you know, I'm not sure that the society would, would perceive him in the same way. Why isn't he in school? Why doesn't he get a job? He should be doing something. Nepal is a country relatively untouched by the global market, where 90% are devout Hindus and 10% Buddhist. I think it's a great story uh, for Nepal. I mean, I think it comes to the right time. Uh, Nepal is in a state of political turmoil. So I think it's very interesting that all of a sudden there is this, uh, this birth of a myth in front of our eyes, you know, just starting. Nepal faces a stark, desolate reality without its religious beliefs. I don't know if, if the story of Ram Badur Bamzan appeals to a certain consciousness now looking for some saint, some, you know, some figure, someone who can perform miracles at a time when life seems so tawdry and broken and uncertain. As science progresses, it's pushing God further and further out. And where science hasn't yet encroached, you will find God. Ram began meditating in May 2005. By November, the remarkable story hits the press worldwide. Newspapers claim fake. Government officials say that the boy's local supporters have received around £4,000 in donations. Up until now, no film crew has been allowed up close. We will attempt to be the first to obtain proof of the claims of the Buddha boy. With fierce loyalty, his followers hide him at certain times of the day. This has drawn suspicion, but who are these followers and what are their motives? What has happened is that because of the people who've started coming in, it's, it's turned into a kind of a circus. Soon roads become nothing but dirt tracks. After traveling more than 12 hours from Kathmandu, the last 40 kilometers through dense jungle, Suddenly, a gate manned by sentries bars the way any further. And we're diverted to a bustling temporary city of hawkers, fast food sellers, and a bus park in the middle of nowhere. 
Previously, we used to farm only, but now there are jobs available. There is good income. Amazingly, ten months ago, there was nothing here but jungle. The city has been expanding at an astonishing rate ever since the boy began his meditation. There is a kind of economic desperation which perhaps uh, a phenomenon like this would attract people. I used to run a restaurant in the city, but this one makes much more money. After walking five kilometers from the temporary city with the throngs of devotees, we are confronted by crowds 20 deep and the boy surrounded by a series of barbed wire fences. We have to fight our way through just to get a glimpse from the 50 meter fence. People have come from far and wide. Many have walked for days. Some give offerings, others pray. All give donations. We need to get closer than the fence is allowing us, and soon realize that Ram's eldest brother is running the site. Grandjaji Bonjam leads the committee, an 18-strong self-appointed group set up to protect the boy's welfare, and it will be his decision if we are allowed to film. Today I'm busy. Maybe tomorrow is a good day. Finally, he lets us film inside the 50-meter boundary. Unfortunately, just as we reach a second fence at a distance of 25 meters from the boy, we're stopped from going any further. So it is here we start recording. By the end of our first day, Ram has not moved a muscle since we began filming eight hours previously. If you wanted to prove that he really wasn't taking any fluid at all, you would have to film continuously for at least four to five days. At 10 p.m. we are moved back to the 50 meter fence, too far away for our infrared cameras to pick out the boy. But without water, even under reasonably good conditions, you're talking about lasting no more than about four days. He's trapped behind a gate padlocked by the brother. He has the only key. It is the only access in or out. By staying at the site and continually filming, we hope to find some clues to support Buddha Boy's remarkable claim. In Nepal, Ram Bonjan, a 15-year-old boy, has been meditating in a hollow of a tree for 10 months. He plans to continue for six years. I do know of the case of a medical student who did survive without food for something like 43 days, but he was able to survive on snow. So far, his supporters claim he has not eaten or drunk anything. I get the feeling this is going to be slightly different than some of the other Hindu scams that have happened. Some of these are not genuine holy men. They have long beards and then they smear themselves in ashes and then they would be in cahoots with the local villagers. This one, I think, will carry on a bit. We're into our second day, 27 hours into filming. Still not enough to prove if this is a miracle or a scam. To find out the truth, we're staying on site day and night to film continuously for another 69 hours, as this is the time it takes for an average human being to die without any water. And like 70% of the body is water. Without it, it would affect every physical functioning of the body. By day two, you start to cannibalize the stores of protein that you have. I would say from day two, your skin is going to get rough, cracks appearing at the corner of the lips, and the skin will lose its color and the brightness and the elasticity. So far, we have not seen any of these physical changes in the boy's appearance. He is surviving on nourishment. The question is, what kind of nourishment? We can't, as Westerners, tap into using spiritual force and spiritual energy for nourishment. That's the key here. 